Welcome back to my channel. I'm Nate Lynn, the online business broker, and I'm walking you through step-by-step -step how to value your business. If your business between $1 million and $150 million in size and you're privately owned. In order to qualify for that, you need to be doing at least a half a million dollars in profit. You need to be two years old or older, and you need to own yourself, not be on the public markets. Uh, so I'm going to get into some more information here throughout this video series. If you are interested in the biz subject of business valuations and you like what you've been seeing, hopefully you have already hit the thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel. All right, we're going to jump into the business operations next. We're going to jump into business history and operations. This is a critical component of the business valuation process because the buyer needs to understand what's been going on before in the past, what needs to keep happening, and then what are they going to end up taking over? There's a huge myth, too, that a lot of people are concerned about, where is my whole team going to get fired? That is almost never the case, almost never the case. Usually a buyer wants to take exactly what you have done to continue making money the way in the future that it's been doing it in the past. So they need to understand what have you been doing in the past and how is that going to keep going in the future? In our first self-assessment here, we're going to go through the seller's interest in transition support and ongoing involvement. So rate yourself a four if you're willing to hold equity, if you're willing to be involved long term, um, not even necessarily doing the same amount of work that you're doing right now, but just being involved long term. This is so, so important. You don't have to necessarily retain equity, meaning like sell 80% of your company, keep 20%, and then the, the new owner, the new majority owner, be running the majority of things. It doesn't always have to be like that. But at the least, you need to be willing to provide 90 days worth of transitionary support. That's typically for smaller deals. If you're $10 million and more, you're going to be involved for years. I hate to break it to you. Uh, very rarely can you just drop the microphone, jump off stage, go like fly down to Mexico, you know, t turn off everything, start having Mai Tais and, and, uh, and margaritas. You're going to have to be involved longer term. The bigger the deal, usually the bigger stakes it is for the buyer to make sure that they've got your long-term involvement. So give yourself a four if you're willing to be involved long-term. And if, if you're like done, I got to get out of here. I can't support this anymore. I'm burnt out. I'm going through divorce. I've, there's a death in the family. I'm like going to jail. Like whatever it is, if there's something that's like crazy, that's imminent, that's coming up, give yourself a zero. And then just honestly rate yourself somewhere in between. If you feel like you could give, um, if you could give at least... I'd say 90 days uh, is probably a one. If you give um, 180 days, I'd give that a two. If you can give uh, a full year, I'd say that's a three. And if you're willing to do multiple years, give yourself a four. The next point is your current revenue retention. Is it dependent on the, the founder's involvement? So is the... If there's little to no dependency on you as the seller to be involved in sales and revenue going forward, that's great because that's what you're going to end up doing. You can just transition this puppy off and let somebody take over and then they, they're not dependent on you. They don't need you for, you're not doing sales calls. You're not doing Facebook ads. You're not, you're not like material to the, the revenue of the business. Give yourself a four. If you are like a one man show and you're, you're, um, you're closing sales calls, you're handling everything that comes up. You're just, you know, managing the entire process. Uh, whew, okay. It's a zero. And if you're somewhere in between, between, remember, just think about your revenue as a scale of, of one to a hundred. How much of it is are you involved? If you're involved at a hundred, that gives you a zero. If you're involved zero percent of the time, that gives you a four. So reverse engineer that and give yourself uh, give yourself a number. If you're involved only about fifty percent of the revenue is how is how involved you are, then you give yourself a two, two point two, two point five, something like that. Inventory, operating capital, and capital expenditure. Well, how much money is needed? A lot of businesses, they don't require a lot of working capital. They don't need much money to run. If it's a digital business, an e-learning business, a media company, um, maybe very limited, if any, operating capital needed. Give yourself a four. 
if you've got a lot of inventory, there's a lot of capital, a lot of float, a lot of money you have to float for this, give yourself a zero. And I would rate that like at a million dollars for deals in the one to $10 million range. If you've got a million dollars worth of inventory or more, you're probably going to be sitting at the zero on the scale of this. If you've got a, you know, a business between one and $10 million and you've got less than $100,000 worth of uh, uh, capital required for the business, that would give you a four. So give you some ranges to start with. The next section is assets. What assets, proprietary technology, what sort of software, what's your website look like? Is it a custom website? Does it, is it involved in, uh, in some, uh, some aspect of the business that's, that gives you a higher barrier of entry than the next guy who just grabbed a Shopify store or a WordPress site and threw up a, a theme forest you know, theme on it and just started you know, selling out widgets and stuff like that? Give yourself a four if you've got distinguishing technology and proprietary materials, proprietary trademarks, technology, software uh, in place in your website that helps you sell and, and, and fulfill the services or products of your, uh, of your company. If you don't have anything proprietary, everything is just like is just off the shelf and, and there's no, there's no assets. There's no technology around this. Give yourself a zero, but don't beat yourself up. I sell these businesses all the time. If you don't have any proprietary technology, it may mean that you're not going to score super high on this, but remember the multiple is going to be a, a mathematical equation of 27 some odd factors. So just because you've got a zero on one doesn't mean you're going to be at a, at a, a zero or a one X multiple when this whole sucker is done, but be honest about each of these with yourself and just grade yourself accordingly. In our next section, what kind of operating systems do you have in place? Do you have any manuals? Do you have some technology? Do you have uh, uh, standard operating procedures? Do you, like, have you documented SOPs and systems and technology that's, that's used uh, for your business? If so, congratulations. Most of my clients don't. I've only had a few that did this. I give them a four. Most of them don't have any manuals, technology, procedures, SOPs, it's all, uh, it's all <laughs> tribal knowledge with the owner. And, ugh, okay, but I'll sell these all the time. All the, all the time. Like these, these businesses go, um, they get sold, but that's, that would be a zero on this one. If you can give yourself a little bit of kudos uh, and work on some, uh, some standard operating procedures uh, or document some stuff, shoot, just do videos like this. Grab Loom, record five minute videos, and then just like save those in a Google Drive somewhere that's like a turnover binder. It's like a handoff to a buyer or to employees if you're delegating them. Our next section is all about vendor relationships. What are your manufacturers? What are your marketing vendors? What's your outsourcing vendors? Well, how critical are they to the, to the long-term success of the business? If they can be replaced and there's very low dependency for them, give yourself a four. If you are stuck in a corner and you, you have to use this one manufacturer or you have to use uh, this one marketing consultant or an outsource service provider, um, then unfortunately that dependence is going to come back and get you a little bit with the buyer. You're going to give yourself a zero on that. Location, location, location. I primarily sell internet-based businesses where the location is, is not an issue. They can relocate anywhere. Uh, for consumer goods companies, that means having a 3PL uh, firm you know, or a, a third-party logistics company that's handled the shipping and fulfilling of your products. Uh, if you're a B2B company, uh, it just means like having a remote office somewhere. You probably don't even need an office anywhere. But managing your staff on Zoom and, and using all the internet, all the resources available on the internet to be able to, uh, to, to run the business fully remote and for it to be relocatable from whatever jurisdiction it's, in, it's incorporated in uh, or, or organized in to wherever the buyer is. Give yourself a four if everything is fully remote. Give yourself a zero if everything is local and like you're a brick and mortar company and like in a, in a locality that is not changeable. can't move it. Um, yeah, that's, that's just where this one's going to sit. Most of my buyers on Website Closures Marketplace are looking for businesses that are online and can be relocated because they're not geographically you know, nearby. And that gives us a much bigger pool of buyers to sell to consequentially, which is great. Uh, but the downside is if you've got a, if you're very geographically constrained, um, that can be an issue on the buy side. We've got much less buyers in one geographic area than we have around the world. Our buyers are around the world. I've got people from Asia, Europe, um, South Africa, 
uh, South America looking to buy businesses and their money's good. As long as that wire hits, boom, let's sell it to them. What's your skilled support staff look like and how do they drive growth? Are they in a position to be able to drive growth? Have you delegated to a leadership team or to sales team or to, to folks on this on your staff, if you have any? Uh, and, and if you don't, again, like it's, there's a myth that you have to have a team in order for your business to sell. I've, I sold a $25 million company. It was two owners, two founders, no other employees. So it can be done. But they would have got more if they had a little bit more skilled staff in place. And so what does your staff look like? Can they drive growth and sales after the business has been sold? Give yourself a four if you've got leadership and you've got staff who can drive the growth of the business upwards. If you don't have any staff and the owner is the one who's driving all of the growth, give yourself a zero. That's the end of the self-assessment test. Uh, now what you can do is you click on the link below and I've got a Excel file version of it. If you contact me, I'll send it to you. You can plug in your own numbers, watch this video. You can rewatch these sections, assess yourself somewhere between zero and four for each of these sections. And then at the end uh, of the spreadsheet, it's going to give you your multiple. And if you're curious about if that multiple is high, is that multiple low, you want me to take a look at it, uh, send a message to me in the comments below, click on the link below to schedule a business valuation. Uh, if you're over uh, two years old and over a million dollars in gross sales, I'll do your business valuation directly. If you're a little bit younger than that or your business is smaller than that, I'll have a member of my team get back in touch with you. And again, I love sharing this kind of content, this sort of material. If you've gotten any value from this whatsoever, give me a thumbs up on the video. Click on subscribe. I've got a whole plan of content. I've spent the last two years putting together material. And not only do I have an entire book worth of material here that I can put into this, I've got a ton of other how-tos and what to do and you know scenarios and situations where people are emailing me asking about stuff. If you've got any questions, shoot me some messages. Maybe one of your questions will end up in into one of these videos and I can address it directly. Meantime, Thank you very much for watching. I've got a whole other series of relevant mergers and acquisitions content coming. And please subscribe, hit thumbs up, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.